So the knockoff Transformers train has well and truly left the station, and I'll be completely honest with you, I have bought a first class ticket, and I'm I'm in it for the distance now. Some of these bots have been fantastic, some of them have been mediocre, some of them um, are just blatant rip-offs, some of them are improvements on the originals, and the market is just completely saturated now with all different types of bots. Uh, and I'm here to review one of the most recent ones, which I picked up from the lovely people at Transformers Direct. And it is a review of a bot they're calling Data Clerk. Not those Data Clerks. This Data Clerk. Now, this is a Yes model version, as you can see there, of the... Um, Mate Toys Capola, I think that's how it's pronounced. Um, this is a straight off rip off. There are some minor improvements, but I, I've never actually held the original. So, but I've been well informed by the lovely, gorgeous Borders dude that um, this is a slight improvement on the original, especially on the feet. So, let's start off with the box itself. You can see the box, even though it's got a glossy surface, it's got a kind of fake look to it it's not quite official looking uh, I, I can't quite put my finger on it but you can see you've got chrome dome or capola or data clerk there you've got rf01 data clerk there you've got style all there you've got data clerk on the side data clerk on the side you've got chrome dome on the top you've got chrome dome in vehicle mode on the bottom and you've got some details on the back you've got Fantasy robot or robot fantasy, robot fantasy with a kind of guy that looks a little bit like Deadpool and the Yes Model logo there. Inside, we've got a very thin plastic clamshell. A clamp down or Capola or Data Coat comes in housed in that. You've got a set of instructions that are a straight rip off of the Mate Toys version. There you go, there's the, the front set and the back set of the instructions. So yeah, that's it for the packaging. And here's the data clerk himself, Chrome Dome. Now, this is a great looking toy. It feels really good in hand. Um, I have to say the qu plastic quality um, is an 8 or a 9 out of 10. It's fantastic. Um, it's well built, paint works, paint apps are really, really well done. You can see there on his face, um, paint apps here, paint apps here. You've got some gold chroming on the wheels, which looks absolutely fantastic. It is a really, really, really cool toy. Does it feel like a fake? Absolutely not. Um, the most annoying thing I found about this figure is the feet. Now these parts don't tend to tab in. Um, you have got some angle tilts. They are on a ball joint there. But I'm told that these actually pop off on the original. Whereas on this version they don't. They actually, even though they, they are loose in a way, they're not loose enough to shake, you'll see. So even though I don't like the design, it is fit for purpose. So let's do articulation on this guy. Head can do a full 360. But for some reason, my face likes to pop off. Now, I don't know I don't know if they were going to release another head skull for this guy. Maybe someone in the comments can tell me, because that pops off quite easily. It gets borderline annoying at times. Um, it can do a 360. You're going to have to trust me on that while I'm doing this one-handed. But the head can do a full 360. Shoulders can also do a full 360. You can also move out to around 90 degrees. If you were to push these bits forward, you can probably get a little bit further, but I don't know why you would do that, because it would look very silly. Elbows can bend all the way back and all the way forwards. Hands can pivot all the way and do a 360. And fingers are on a single pin. You've got a slight waist to the swivel, but it's obstructed by the kibble on the back. You have got a ratchety thigh swivel. Um, this is the only thing that I've noticed on mine. These are very tight, and I don't know if you can see, 
but the plastic starts to look like it's coming a little bit loose. Um, I'm not worried it's going to break, but nevertheless, it's still a little bit worrying. You've got some metal ratchets on the knees, which are really, really good. You've got no knee swivel because you've got that thigh swivel. And you've got a ball joint on the ankle, which means you can go forwards. If you want to, this part will pop up. So you can go backwards, so you can go forwards a little bit. And you can put a little bit of a tilt on there as well, which is really, really cool. Um, it's good that you can get those angles, but it's not... They just don't feel the most secure. The ball joints are tight enough, and there's no problem with that at all. But I don't know, it's just personal preference. It, it, it's to do with the design and not the knockoff of this toy. Now inside the hands, you'll see there's just a slight groove in there. And that's how you take these weapons... And you slide these into the groove in the hand. Now, I remember seeing on Ben's collectibles videos, he had a little bit of trouble getting his gun with into his right hand. And I had the same trouble, to be completely honest with you. But what I found is, once I'd forced it in there once, that was actually fitting there really well. And now I haven't got a problem with it. Maybe it's just because I'm a big butch brute force of a man that likes to, doesn't know his own strength but they fit in there now and there's no problem with them um yeah Capo this guy Capola, he looks in robot mode probably i want to say probably one of the best looking third party figures i've seen they've nailed the cartoon accuracy they've nailed the proportions the size, if I'm honest with you, compared to other masterpieces, is a little bit big. But that's not a problem to do with this knockoff. It's to do with the original design of the figure as well. Shall we, shall we do a few size comparisons so you can see? So here he is next to Masterpiece Hot Rod. And I think you can see what I mean now about the size comparison. This guy is bloody huge compared to Hot Rod. Even in car mode, it really does dwarf the other Masterpiece Autobot cars. Um, that is my only real concern with him. Where is he going to fit in? Well, you know what? It will fit in with Iron Will or Stubborn something or other. I can't remember his name. There is going to be a knockoff version of him, of course, Hardhead. Um, he'll fit in with that. But personally, between you and me, I really don't think this can fit into a masterpiece scale shelf. I'm not a massive worrier about scale as such, but I know some guys out there are. And to me, it's just, it's just a bit too big if you are worried about scale. Just for fun, let's compare him next to the Generation 1 guy. As you can see... It really does capsulate everything about the toy in an up-to-date, cartoon-accurate figure. Even down to those guns, there's there's just enough of an update on those weapons. It, it's really cool. It, it, it's a cool toy. It's a cool representation of what this guy was and now is. And here he is next to the Titan's Return offering. Uh, as you can see, this guy does dwarf him as well. Um... You'll notice differences in the face sculpt, and this is because obviously the Titans Return bot has taken influence from the Lost Light comics, the More Than Meets the Eye comics, um, rather than the Generation 1 cartoon or indeed toy. Now, um, I'm sure you all know this, but for those of you that don't, Takara has re uh, released a Legends version which does have a more accurate sculpt of head. Um, to be honest with you, I am probably going to look at picking up one of those at TFN if I can find one for the right price. And I might as well do why I'm here. The only other Chrome Dome I own. This is, of course, the Collector's Club version of Chrome Dome. Uh, he's not a headmaster. He's a target master. Uh, and he comes with Stylor as a kind of bow and arrow rather than um, a, a head or a gun as such. But there we are, size comparison between those two as well. So here's a Coppola, or Data Clerk, in his vehicle mode. Um, it is a pretty nice looking car. Um, to me, it doesn't feel quite 
G1 enough. <laughs> and I know that sounds a little bit daft because it, it does actually look really, really good. Um, but it just doesn't seem wide enough and it seems a little bit too long. Um, let me do a few size comparisons and then you might actually see what, what I mean. So here's Data Clerk here with Generation 1 Chrome down. You can see what I mean about the width on these parts here. I think that's the thing that was didn't look quite right to me. Everything else I've pretty much nailed. Um, from the side it looks great, from the front it looks great. It is a very G1 looking toy. But to me, these panels here just don't stick out enough to, to make it look perfect to me but that's just my own personal opinion and that's nothing to do with the actual quality of the of the toy itself this is the design of the original um but yeah that's just my personal opinion here he is next to titan's return chrome down a deluxe car as you can see pretty cool and here he is next to the collector's club chrome down again another deluxe so let's go to some of the details of this car mode. The wheels are made of rubber and they roll really, really well. The guns um, transform from robot mode. That's how you hold them in robot mode. And they can clip on this tab here. Like so, to hold them in place. If you want to, you can move that forward and have them more advanced if you want that look. But there you go. You can open up the inside. And you have got space for his headmaster or titan master. Uh, Stylo, wasn't it? Stylo, I'm sure it was. Um, so he can fit inside there. And as you can see, there's some good detail inside the, the cockpit or or driver's seat. Um, really, really good looking figure. It feels really robust and really built well in this mode. Um yeah, I, I actually really, really like this toy. Despite the, the aesthetics not being wide enough here for, for my own personal opinion. Um, it's a great looking chrome down. Transformation to get here is a little bit of a ball ache, to be honest with you. I mean, that's nothing on the knockoff um, version. It, if anything, the joints are a little bit tighter and don't pop off um, from what I'm led to believe about the original. But it's just the design of it, and I've got a pet hate of transformations being over complicated when they don't need to be. Now, Generation 1 Chrome down here, um, transformation simple. Um, what they've done here is, and now they've built a masterpiece style figure, but they've just over complicated the transformation, and that I find that quite annoying. But saying that, if you like a complicated transformation, if you if you're a fan of the more Rubik's Cube Transformers like uh, Revenge of the Fall and Mixmaster, for example, then you know what, you will love this toy. Uh, it's just my personal preference that I like to be able to get from car mode or vehicle mode to robot mode quite simply and easily. I don't like overcomplicated transformations on expensive toys that potentially, I'm not saying about this one, but potentially might break them. There's some of the masterpiece figures that are just... Transformations are just crazy. Let's have a quick look at Stylo. Now, he's a pretty cool little headmaster. Um, a lot of kibble around here, and obviously an upside down chrome down head at the back, which is standard for most, um, <laughs> most headmasters. Some lovely paintwork there on the face. Nice bit of orange and nice bit of red down here. He's a cool little headmaster. Uh, let's compare him next to G1 Stylo. So, not too much difference in height, a little bit more width. This guy's been on the weights a little bit more than this guy. And compared to Titan's Return, Stylo, a massive, massive difference, as you can say, in quality and design. And just because I can, let's compare him to the Transformers Collector's Club Stylo, who isn't a head, he's actually a kind of target master, a bow and arrow. And as you can see, this guy is actually bigger than the third party version. So in summary, am I happy that I've bought Data Clerk here or Chrome Down? Yes, I am. I really like the look of the toy. I really like the the aesthetics in robot mode, even though the car doesn't quite do it for me. Let's face it, you don't spend upwards of £50 on a transformer to display him in car mode. At least I don't anyway. 
Robot mode is perfect for a Chrome Dome. He oozes Generation 1 accuracy. He's a fantastic looking toy. Um, build quality, exceptional. Plastic quality, exceptional. Um, paint quality, exceptional. There's only a couple of things you can tell that this is actually fake compared to the original. Some of those are improvements. Uh, the ankles are tighter. They don't pop off. They have not popped off when I've transformed this guy. Um, the other reason is the colours are slightly different on this one. Only fractionally, but you will tell a slight difference. But all in all, I mean, I looked on eBay, and these guys go for upwards of £150 for the original Make Toys version. And this guy... I picked up for about $75 from Transformers Direct. He arrived within no, well, less than a week of ordering him, which was pretty fantastic. Um, I think you can probably get him cheaper from AliExpress, if I'm honest with you. But the risk that you're paying with AliExpress is that I've got stung with custom fees a couple of times from that website. My Jumba Brook has cost me 30 odd pound in custom fees. TF Direct, I've never had a problem with them. They're faster at shipping. Um, so you may be paying that a little bit more, but you know what, you'll get it sooner and you'll have less, ch less chance of getting custom fees. Um, also, I have to say as well, um, I've had some incidents on Land Express with items not arriving as I should do and the customer services support, even though you do get there in the end, hasn't been as good as Transformers Directs. Now, this guy I had on pre-order. I had an email come through saying you pay, uh, your pre-order's due. Uh, can you make a payment? I did make a payment. And then less than four or five hours later, they actually dropped the price of this guy down by, I think it was $10. Um, so about six seven pounds um i emailed them on the evening um by the time i woke up i got a response offering me a refund of ten pound uh, ten dollars or a voucher of ten dollars so you know what at least you know with this website that there even sometimes there is a problem there's a problem in all shops that we go in i've had problems with my asda shopping and all that kind of stuff but at least they get back to you and at least they do offer you a resolution so i find that really really reassuring um so yeah i would definitely recommend picking up this guy if you're a fan of headmasters if you're a fan of chrome dome um if you're just a fan of transformers and got a little bit of money in your back pocket then you know what I definitely get this guy. Do I feel bad that he's a fake? Now, this is a question that I'll get asked a lot. Um, uh, in all honesty, no. I feel bad that my Hasbro ones are fakes. In a way, and I know I'm going to get some thumbs down for this, but in a way, the main toys uh, figure isn't an official product. It's not an official Hasbro product. And they're a company that's designed a toy, and I know a lot of effort's gone into it, but they've designed a toy based on someone else's idea. And so I don't feel bad that someone's ripped off that, because essentially what they've done is they're making money off someone else's idea. And that's just my opinion, and that's fine, and if you disagree with me, then that's, that's completely cool. But anyway, back to this dude. Great toy, great figure. I'll put a link in the description below. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I've been Zork Rider, and I'll be speaking to you soon.